Yes. I feel a sadness at the passing of this man, Dr. Ross Fogelman. He was my family physician up until 1998. Or somewhere when I began getting Medicaid and Medicare because he didn't take that. And then I was switched over to Dr. Dumas. Oh, I mean Dr. Dumas. That's my dad. That, that's what my dad would like to call him Dr. Dumas. Well, I remember he was a compassionate soul to all his patients. He took the time to know you as a person, not just a patient. Sure, we had to wait. The way I remember one thing about going to Dr. Fogelman's office, office is you waited a long, 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 long time to get, be called back there. <laughs> I remember that. But it was worth it. There are two cases he worked on that are most memorable with me. The one where I was when I was in Miss Teresa Betty Redding's fourth grade class. Ah, oh, she was a hypocrite. Always talking about God, but showed no kindness to me. She, uh, was made fun of me. But anyways, enough of that. I was out of school for 11 days. Because I had, I started out as an earache. Real bad earache. In my hearing, I couldn't hear, and my hearing was up at, at about, I don't know, 80%, 75% in both ears. And I remember every day, every freaking day, going to Dr. Fogelman's office. About this, I remember the nurse was uh, the receptionist or nurse. I don't know. Her name was Joanne. My mom knew her from somewhere. I remember her definitely. And every day, we went to Dr. Fogelman's office. He was talking about, hey, we might what we might have to do is remove the tubes in your ears and put some artificial tubes in because your ears are that they're, they're full of fluid. But, I can't remember what exactly he did. But I remember when, when my ears were finally, he, everything was fixed up. He fixed everything up. I remember flushing the toilet, and it sounded, that toilet sounded loud. And I knew my hearing was fixed up. When, when he flushed the toilet, and the toilet was, and I had closed the toilet, and it was loud. Yes. <laughs> I knew my hearing was fixed. And then the other case. In the, I think, summer of 83, I began to feel a constant burning in my stomach. Stomach pains, I call them. The first, I, I remember becoming aware of them at the drop zone. The video arcade that was beside, it was Food Town, but it's now Food Line and Heritage. It was on the left side of Food Town. I remember watching my dad or somebody play a video game, aware of this uncomfortable burning in my stomach. I remember it, it tormented me in the fifth grade. And in the sixth grade, I remember I would drink milk to make it feel better. Sometimes, when it was time to eat, I would be really happy because it felt good to my stomach to eat. I finally complained about it enough. Mom took me to Dr. Fogelman and we had to go quite a few times. He, he at one time he thought I might have worms but what he did and what, what he ended up doing was I think he put me not just as a, as a patient but as a person. He even likes wanted to, like, my, to watch my YouTube videos with the cursing and all. He still loves me. And he is a smart cookie. He is the smartest doctor in Kinston. All the other doctors, poo-poo. And if you see seen Dr. Igbal, 
chances are it's because you're an old fart with one foot in the grave. He's trying to make life as comfortable as he can until you finally kick over and die. <laughs> but I sure hope there's life after death. I hope this man is in heaven. I think he was a Christian. I'm sad it is passing. Death fucking sucks. I wish to God there was. I knew there was life after death. And the near death experiences are causing me more doubt that there is life after death than the fact that of death itself. The woeful inconsistencies. The wolf. Oh, fuck it, man. Fuck it, fuck it, fuck it. Just give me what my life down here, what I want down here, and when I die, I die. Whatever, whatever will be, it will be. Just as long as I can be me. Just, just, just as long as I ha can have those longer arms. Be the good-looking fly guy to the female mentality. Collective female mentality. In the same way as Brad Pitt and Tom Cruise and the Jonas Brothers are and were. To the collective men female mentality. Not just the a few every here and there, but to the collective mentality. Then I will be me. It's not, not just that, that I want need the long arms to be happy. I need the long arms. And I need the good looks while looking young to be me. I'm not me without this. Are your feeble minds able to understand what the fuck I'm saying? Or, uh, or have you ever... If that is if, he, if you've even gotten this far in, in the fucking video without cutting this off, you fucking non-listeners, fuck every goddamn one of y'all who didn't make it to this fucking point.